For the longest time, I've been debating whether or not I should do reviews on the channel. I enjoy doing discussion videos and video essays, but I wasn't sure if reviews would fit in with that kind of content. Well, I've decided that it's a kind of video I want to make and I won't pay attention to the little voice in the back of my head telling me not to. But anyway, there's no book series I'd rather start this with than the series that really got me started with reading fantasy. Mistborn is a fantasy book trilogy written by Brandon Sanderson. There's a second currently ongoing series that takes place hundreds of years later than the original trilogy, but I'll be focusing only on the base trilogy here. In this review, I'll be looking at five different aspects of the books and rating them out of 10. Then we'll tally up the final rating for the trilogy at the end. I'll keep this review completely spoiler free of course, so if you haven't read the trilogy yet, don't be afraid to watch this through to the end. The Mistborn trilogy is the story of how a young woman goes from skulking through the streets as an urchin to a member of thieving crews, and how she develops from there. Using her magical abilities as a Mistborn, she teams up with an unlikely group of thieves to undermine the dystopian empire they live in. She must learn to trust and open up, while at the same time also learning how to control her abilities and using them to protect who she loves. The story of each novel is quite different from the others. Unlike most trilogies that flow upon one another in one long, cohesive narrative, where the protagonist is working to a main goal throughout all the novels, Mistborn takes a different approach. In the first novel, the story is focused on taking down the Lord Ruler and toppling the Empire. The second novel concerns itself with dealing with political upheaval and uncertainty and how to restore order to a fractured empire. The third deals with how they go about unifying the world against a threat greater than them all. Each book has a new set of challenges and final goals for the characters. It's an interesting aspect I find quite refreshing compared to some other trilogies I've read. But now that we've established what the trilogy is about, let's actually discuss my thoughts, shall we? Character The most important aspect in any book is character. You can have the most interesting concepts, most compelling plot, and most intricate world building in the world, but if the characters are flat and uninteresting, I probably won't finish your book. The characters draw us into a book and keep us hooked. Fortunately, Brandon Sanderson is one of the best character writers I know. Vin, our protagonist, is an amazingly complex and interesting character. Her personality is extremely well done and makes sense within the world and life she's lived. Her constant struggle with anxiety also adds to her complexity. The supporting cast is just as well written as Vin despite not getting as much screen time. Seyzed is a gem and the deeper dive into his psyche in the third book cemented him as a character I'll never forget. Kelsia is larger than life and is this compelling madman you just can't help but smile whenever you read him. Elend is thoughtful and a genuinely nice guy who only wants to make the world a better place. And even the more minor characters like Spook and Tensoon and Breeze and the others are always a joy to read. Brandon did a masterful job in crafting complex characters within the space of a single trilogy and making their relationships with each other shine. On that note though, I will say that I did have an issue with the relationship between Vin and Elend. Not that I think it was poorly done, but rather that I think it went too fast to be realistic. It's likely just the effect of having it all happen within the space of three books that caused it, but it's still an issue I have to acknowledge. Also, while I enjoyed Seyzed's inner struggle in the third book, I feel that the catalyst for it wasn't believable enough considering how short the time was that they spent together. I won't say more for fear of spoilers, but if you know, you know. So, taking this all into consideration, I'll give the character work in the Mistborn trilogy a solid 7 out of 10. It could have easily been an 8 or 9 had there been more time for things to develop at a more natural pace, but a 7 is still a very good score. Plot Plot will be tough to discuss without spoilers, but I'll give it a shot. The actual story of Mistborn is one we've seen a couple times before. Overthrowing the Empire, uniting an Empire, and defeating a godlike evil force are all stories as old as time itself, but the mastery is in the execution of course. In the first book, the plot is quite commonplace in fantasy, but having it come from the perspective of thieving crews is a refreshing twist that I don't think has really been done before, or if it has, I definitely haven't encountered it. 
and taking that along with the mentor and apprentice subplot really worked well for getting me into the world and story as a whole. I believe the first book could be read as a standalone and still be a great read. It stands on its own two feet very well. The second book deals with a plot that could easily have been boring. And to tell the truth, there were times it did feel quite slow in plotting. Most fans agree that the second book suffers from middle book syndrome and it's the slowest and toughest of the three to get through. I know that after the second book I was kind of burned out a little and it took me a while to get back into the third one and finish the trilogy. The same holds true for a friend of mine that I recently introduced to the books. It's arguably the weakest of the three and while it's still a good book overall, it falls short when compared to the other two. The third book is very close to the first for me if I had to pick a favourite. A ticking time bomb concept is introduced that makes you realise the heroes have really very little time left to accomplish an impossible task. This does very well in raising the stakes and accelerating the pace of the book. On top of that, the battles are larger scale and far more epic and the magic system really becomes more fully fleshed out. Definitely a well conceptualised plot with masterful execution in this one. Overall, I'll give the plot of the trilogy a 7 out of 10. The first book carries most of the score and the second book is what really limits it, but overall it's a really good score and worth reading for anyone who likes a good plot. World Building World Building is a very broad category that encompasses everything from the world's history, to the setting of the story, to the languages the characters speak, to something as tiny as what shoes the characters wear. This is, at the end of the day, about immersion. Did I feel immersed in the world? Were there moments where I forgot about the real world and just sunk so deep into this trilogy that I lost myself and fell into a deep and total immersion? For Mistborn? Undoubtedly. The setting is so well done that you can tell Sanderson spent hours upon hours just crafting exactly why the world is that the way it is. Now of course, the setting is one unified empire, so there's little variety in terms of cultures and languages. Which is understandable, but he still did a superb job at making it feel well thought out and realistic. The only criticism I had is that there's a marked lack of history in the books. The Empire is a thousand years old, yet we know almost nothing of what happened in that time. We know some of what the world and nations were like before the Empire was established, but between the Empire starting and when the novels take place, there's this huge gap with a whole lot of nothing. Now, it is only a trilogy and it can be argued that there wasn't much room for a lot of history as well, but this is a common issue I found with Sanderson's writing even in his longer series like the Stormlight Archive. So overall, I'd give world building an 8 out of 10. In context for a trilogy, he managed to accomplish a lot here and despite some of the shortfalls, I still think it was really well done. Magic Magic is an integral part of fantasy, and even in low magic fantasy, it's an important aspect of the story. Important enough, it seems, for me to need a whole separate section for it instead of putting it under world building. But of course, magic is very fluid and not always straightforward. A book could have very little magic or a lot of it. A book could have a very hard magic system or a very soft magic system. So how does one judge the quality? Simple by measuring how well it complements and integrates with the story and whether or not it accomplished what the author was setting out to do. And if you know Brandon Sanderson, you know his magic systems are notorious for being some of the strongest aspects of his books. He's so well known for his magic systems that there's even a thing like Sanderson's Three Laws of Magic, and in Mistborn this is clearly apparent. The magic system in Mistborn is deep, complex, well thought out and an integral part of the story. It complements the narrative very well and will probably be used as a prime example of how to do a hard magic system well for generations to come. I even did a whole video on the Mistborn magic system so if you want a more in-depth discussion on it, feel free to check it out and don't worry, it's also spoiler free. I don't think anybody would be surprised if I gave Mistborn a score of 10 out of 10 for the magic. And yes, 10 out of 10s can happen in my reviews if something is exceptionally well done to the point that I feel it'll stand the test of time and be the inspiration for a generation of future authors. Mistborn's magic system is something I feel I can say that about with the utmost confidence. Structure The final category is the structure of the novels. Was the pacing well done? How much did I enjoy the prose? 
This is basically the category that goes over how well all the previous elements were put together and executed. I think I've already touched a bit on the pacing. The first book is paced very well. It didn't plod on too slowly and it didn't rip at a breakneck speed. It went at exactly the speed it needed to to work well. The second book however slowed down considerably and felt a bit plodding at times if I'm completely honest. The third book, thanks to the countdown element, felt like it went by much faster than either two that came before. It didn't go too fast to be enjoyable, but it was definitely fast enough to be significantly noticeable. In terms of prose though, I'm not a huge fan of Sanderson. In his writing lectures, he talks about having transparent prose that allows the reader to almost ignore the actual writing and just experience the story. He argues that being too descriptive can be distracting and immersion breaking at times. And while I can understand the argument and even agree to an extent, I actually enjoy well-written prose a lot. I'm definitely not a fan of the modern fantasy trend of having very sparse description and prose. I like sentences that have beautiful description to an almost poetic extent. Think a mix between Rothfuss, Martin and Tolkien. Sanderson however ranks low on the scale for prose in my opinion. Overall, the structure of the Mistborn trilogy is definitely executed well though it does have its flaws. I think that the pacing between the three books was a bit too erratic and the prose left quite a bit to be desired. Despite that, however, Sanderson did manage to combine all the different aspects of his books in a very compelling way. Giving it some thought, I'd have to give the structure a 6 out of 10. Definitely above average, but I wouldn't call it exceptional by any stretch. The Mistborn trilogy is ultimately one of my all-time favourite fantasy trilogies and I'll always be a big promoter for it as I see it as a great entry trilogy for new fantasy fans. It of course has some flaws but I think those are ultimately overshadowed by what has been done well here. I'd like to give the Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson an overall score of 7.6 out of 10. Definitely a good trilogy and well worth the read for any self-respecting fantasy fan. But of course, those are just my thoughts and opinions. What did you think about the Mistborn trilogy? What would you give it out of 10? Let me know in the comments below and of course hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of what I do here. Anyway, that has been it for now guys. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.